kind of talk about what we do specifically. Um, basically, one of the big things people like to ask about is what is a home inspection exactly? And it's, a, it's an objective third-party evaluation of the system and components associated with a particular property. Um, it's very physical or very, very um, visual in nature. It doesn't involve necessarily tearing things apart. Uh, it, it, it's a confirmation of the component and system condition. So does the air conditioner work? Does the furnace work? Do we get the right temperatures out of it or expected temperatures? Um, we don't know necessarily that it's gonna run for two hours or if it's gonna keep up with the, the outside air temperatures because sometimes systems are undersized or oversized. We don't evaluate that. But we do look at it and go, yeah, the system's coming on. We're getting 140 degree air out of the furnace, that's a good sign, or we're getting 60 degrees out of the air conditioner, that's a good sign. We're not seeing anything that says, hey, you know, nothing's worse than an owner buying a property and getting in there, turn on the heat and go, oh, crap, <laughs> that's eight thousand dollars right there that they just took a hit on. Um, so we will operate all those different systems, jetted tubs, um, garbage disposals. We'll fill up a jetted tub and run it, turn on the garbage disposal. We don't shove the carrots down there or do anything like that. We'll just kind of verify that things are working. Um, we'll look at the foundations, the roof, the, the walls, the flooring. We're not gonna come in and go, that's the ugliest blue I've ever seen in my life. We don't, we don't care about that. But if that paint is flaking off the wall, we're gonna identify that, hey, you've got paint flaking here. And depending on the age of the home, that could be a, a lead issue. So if you have children, it might be a concern, something you wanna get addressed. Um, let's see. I'm sure, the best inspection, you want to make sure that all of the systems are on in the building. So, I've gone to places and the gas isn't on, the electric's not on, something utility wise isn't there, and so we can't do a full inspection. You're not getting your money's worth. So, you want to make sure that everything's on and accessible. I've been to places where I walk into the room and it's like I'm not empty in that room so that I can get to the furnace. That's not my scope, and all that contents in a lot of cases belong to the to the homeowner, which isn't my client. My client typically is the buyer, so I can't go in there and start taking things apart, damaging stuff to do an invasive inspection because then I become liable. So tell them to have stuff on. If you're getting one done personally, make sure that people, can, the inspector, can get to your panel and to your uh, to your plumbing systems and things like that, or they're kind of getting short out of the deal. Um, Costs related to these inspections. A whole home inspection runs 350. Sometimes we have coupons out that'll bring that down to around 320. Radon, we do that as well. It's 75 for a radon inspection. If you do it with a whole home, you get a combination package deal and it's 400, so you save a little bit of money. Um, and then we also do focus inspections, which are typically $100 to come out for about an hour and write up a report on it on something that you find. If it takes longer than an hour, then the price goes down a little bit on an hourly rate. Or if it involves bringing in a, another specialty, like a structural engineer or something like that, then those fees go on top of that. So, and, uh, um, Qualifications. One of the things you want in a home inspector, you don't want someone who just took an online class or someone that goes, I've been a contractor my whole life, because we all know what contractors do. You know, some of them are very good at foundations, some are very good at framing, some are very good roofers. Some aren't good at anything. <laughs> they expect everybody else to be, and so they don't always know what to look for or how to make things happen themselves. So you need a, a well-balanced individual that's trained. One of the things that I recommend is that you always look for somebody who's an ASHI member. Um, that's the American Association of Home Inspectors, Society of Home Inspectors. And what they do is they have ongoing training programs, um, and they actually evaluate home inspectors inspection reports to determine if they are maintaining the standard because that's what ASHI does. They set a minimum standard and that way you know what to expect. In some of the handouts there, I've got a checklist that they go through. Everything on that checklist basically needs to be addressed in that report. They have, we have to identify what your flooring material is. It's required. If I don't identify that, I haven't given you the minimum standard. Now we can go above that so I can look at your, your appliances aren't part of it, but I can look at your refrigerator and check it out. Usually I write down all the information about the model. Sometimes we recognize models as having uh, recall issues. We may address that in the report. This needs to be a contact manufacturer, that kind of thing. Um, 
license and insurance is a big thing. Kansas recently uh, <coughs> did not renew their legislation that was in place for home inspectors. So that means every one of you right now can go become a home inspector. Some of you might be able to do that. Some of you would go, what? <laughs> and you don't, so you have to look for that. That's why I say look for people that are ASHI affiliated that have that membership. Um, and then insurance as well, because if they don't have insurance in place, they come in and say everything's fine, and you find out the roof is completely gone, and you know, man, I have a course of action against them. You need to, you need to have some type of uh, financial backing there. Uh, for us, our typical client is a homeowner. Um, usually that we're chosen from a list that a, uh, somebody like Adam probably has a list of five or six inspectors that he feels comfortable with, and he gives that to a prospective buyer and says, here's the guys that we, we recommend you choose from, and then we get selected off that list that way. Um, and then uh, the inspection is not to help sell the house, it's to inform the buyer. So some hate realtor agents feel, you know, they don't like the home inspector in some cases and feel like they're the deal killer. Um, but the reality is our client is not the real estate agent, it's the buyer. We're there to tell you, hey, you're all excited about this place, but did you know the foundation? There's a crack in it. There's clearly some settlement issues here that you probably didn't see because you were just fascinated by that kitchen. This would be a pretty big issue. You want to you address that. A lot of times, that's going to give them the ability to use that as a, as a leveraging tool on the negotiation of the price. You know, these items here are worth you know, X amount of dollars in our, in, in, in our uh, opinion, and we'd like to reduce from the price of the contract. Um, the process for us, the typically uh, client or agent will call us um, and we'll try and upsell them on something like radon. You know, you need a home inspection, do you, do you just think about radon? So try and try to get a little bit more out of it, or thermography or something like that. Uh, if we're doing it. We, we haven't gone into thermography, but we're going to uh, examine that this fall probably and see, see what it's taken to get into that. What is that? Uh, that involves a thermal gun, thermal imaging gun. I can take a picture of a wall and tell you if it's insulated properly or not. I can take a picture of your electrical panel and tell you that that circuit seven is hot for whatever reason. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty cool system. Great for energy audits. <coughs> That's the primary focus that they like using for. But it's seen it's finding its way into the home inspection industry now. Um, let's see. Typically, we have a client or the agent send over a listing sheet and a seller's disclosure. That way, I don't show up on the site and go, this air conditioner is a piece of junk, it's not worth anything, blah, blah, blah. And to find out that in the seller's disclosure, they already acknowledge that they're replacing that unit because they know it's bad. That way, I don't waste my time and, and, and all that kind of stuff. There could be other issues like that as well. Um, what we'll do is we'll send out a contract, get it signed, and we'd like to have the uh, client presence at the, at the inspection so they can learn about the home. We're walking through it and why is that like that? We can explain to them why it is or the materials that are in their home. This is how you want to treat that type of countertop. This is what you want to use to clean it. Uh, a lot of folks don't understand that stuff. They'd like to get out the old uh, Comet. <laughs> they see Comet in, in fiberglass tubs for a long time and they realize this is not a good idea. <laughs> so uh, we like to educate people about what they're buying. Typically, it takes an hour and a half to three hours to do it. It depends on the size of the home, that type of thing. Uh, radon will typically take 48 hours. We have, we have on, a radon monitor that we set, it's electronic, and we can't control that. It's, that's a requirement that, that it sits for 48 hours. Um, let's see, usually we get payment at the time the inspection is complete. So when I'm done, I'm buttoning up my case, my hand goes out, and then within 48 hours, you'll get a report in the mail in the email format. 90%, 95% of ours are done uh, electronically. That's how people prefer them. Uh, when you print them out, you can see I set out some samples around there. They're, they're kind, of, kind of thick. Um, in the handouts there, there's a checklist, the actual checklist. There are there's a summary that you'll see, and then there's also a couple of uh, full-blown inspections there. The summary report is really the, the, the meat of it, the important part of it, in that it identifies things that are great. Hey, you've got underground utilities. That's awesome because you know that stuff hanging in the air. You don't have to worry about your trees. Uh, 
to things that <coughs> need to be, uh, that need action items. Hey, this is a safety issue, you've got exposure to electrical wiring, a fire hazard, things like that, to um, things that need attention. Hey, the caulking in this area looks bad, you're gonna get water into your subfloor, or something like that. And then we have things that are recommendations. Your water heater, we recommend you put an insulation blanket on it and save you some money. So it doesn't have to be done as a recommendation. So there's kind of like four categories that pop up on that summer report. And that's really the, the important part of the inspection. The rest of that stuff, um, the other 50 pages or so typically, is all the stuff that's related to that checklist. We've checked the switches, the outlets, the windows, everything. And it'll, a lot of times they'll say yes, checked, good, well, you know, that type of thing. And there's no real reason to review it because you're not going to find anything there. The summary is the key. Um, and that's why we pull our pictures up in the summary. Some people don't, some inspectors don't do that. You have to do a search for the report. Um, our methodology and, and system, basically, I do my off of a tablet. So I've got this modified handy dandy case that I carry around. Got me a custom camera hole there, and I can and take pictures of everything as I walk through and use a canned program that um, has a lot of uh, canned statements. You know, the roof is bad, but then I will elaborate on what, what the issues are that we find. Uh, we have a lot of tools. One of, the, one of the favorites that people always get excited about is when they see this cool little ladder. It's a telescope ladder. And it lets you get pretty much to where you want without going through somebody's house and beating, beating up the walls and trying to make corners and things like that. Where'd you get that? Online. That's awesome. Yeah, they're, they're cool. The uh, there's a I don't know how many manufacturers, but I had to have them send me about a dozen buttons because I had one of those break and I could take the ladder down. <laughs> but seems pretty pretty solid. Haven't had any problems yet. So um, we have that. We have the ladder. Of course, we carry a bag of tools. Um, I use a thermal temperature gun. I carry uh, uh, moisture monitors. So if I see something that looks like a stain on a ceiling, I can go up there and tell you if it's wet or how or if it's dry. Because a lot of times it might be an old stain and they've replaced the roof. Just had uh, repainted. Um, gas monitor. So I come in and something doesn't smell right. Damn, I think you've got a gas leak. I can, I can tell you if you have a gas leak and where it's at. Um, a lot of guys don't check for that kind of thing. We typically do. We check for CO2. So when we're running that furnace and checking the temperatures, I'll lay a CO2 monitor on that register and try and identify if you've got a cracked heat exchanger. I might be able to, might not be able to, but if it's uh, highly notable, it'll, it'll register. Some, sometimes those things will have to run for a couple hours before something may show up. And we don't run for that long because we're, we're not there that long. Um, basically, we, we work from the outside in. So we show up, do an assessment of the property, looking at the grading, drainage, the whole nine yards, the building envelope, the foundation, the roof, and then we come inside and do the same thing, starting with the systems, electrical, plumbing, opening the, the panels, uh, that type of thing. Because we want to identify the big ticket high risk items. The fact that that piece of trim is loose on the wall, okay, you call me, Back later in six months, you go, this trim was loose. Really? <laughs> Instead, I saved you the potential of twelve thousand dollars in MEP repairs. So uh, that's kind of kind of the goal of it is to to mitigate that risk or, or let you know about it so that you can work out a better deal or walk away from it if it's if it's not a good good property for you to buy. Um, with that, I open it up to any questions.